we interrupt the waves music to bring you an interview from Contamination, St. Louis's own sci-fi horror and pop culture convention. Hey, this is RK9 from 89.5 The Wave. I am here at Contamination with Dirk Benedict. Hi, thank you so much for spending some time here with me interviewing. Thank you. So, I'm a little young to remember the original, but I heard that you made a cameo in the newest version of the A-Team. How was that for you since you had originally done a major role? Uh, My life is nothing but cameos now. I don't do original cast appearances. It was uh, disturbing to do a cameo in the A-Team. Could you elaborate on that? Why was it so disturbing? Because they weren't making the A-Team, they were making a different movie. B, Liam Neeson didn't really know who I was or care, which is all right. C, they never let me know what I was doing, so I didn't read, they wouldn't let you read your script or anything. So D, you know, it was kind of rude and insulting. So the next question is, why did you do it? That's a very good question. Why did you do the cameo if it was so interesting? I did it for the money. I got them to pay me a lot of money because I knew it would be really disgusting and painful. So I, they paid me a lot of money. I went up there one night, did it the next day, and then came home. Well, that's very interesting. Um, going back to the original A-Team, was there anything off screen that was funny or interesting that George Papard or Mr. T did that might be fun to share? I can't share them. They're all politically incorrect nowadays. In fact, that whole show is politically incorrect. You know, that show you'll never see again. Well, you haven't seen it since we were on in the 80s. You see it in reruns. But Hollywood will never make it because A, we're four heterosexual guys. My character would have to be gay or a woman. And we were violent, quote unquote, you know. And we were righteous. We were always knew what we were doing. And my character was a womanizer. I mean, he saw girls he thought they were sexy. And so that's all forbidden. You don't see it on television anymore. If you, if you see somebody breaking down doors and kicking somebody in the face, it's a woman doing it. Smoking cigar. Like when they remade Battlestar Galactica. They knew they couldn't have Starbuck in that show, so they just they just turned me into a woman. Then it was okay. So that's why I only do cameos, like I said, in life. You mentioned Battlestar Galactica. I read somewhere that the powers that be almost nixed your character, uh, Lieutenant Starbuck, from the original, but the creator, Glenn Larson, made sure that your character was in it. Could you maybe elaborate on on that, or did you even know about that? Well, I I smoked cigars. This is 1978. This is how far back this this anti-smoking hysteria goes. Back then, the network refused to hire me because I wasn't sexy enough. And then the head of Universal, Frank Price, said no. So they filmed for a week without me. The part was written for me by Glenn, but for a week they filmed. And then finally, Universal had a meeting with NBC. Says, if you don't hire this actor, we're not going to do the damn show. So that's what it took to get me into the show. And then I took the character and I made him a cigar smoker. And I made him uh, more chauvinistic than he was. I made him a real ladies' man. He liked the ladies. He liked to gamble. And Glenn loved that. So Glenn wrote for it. The network hated it. So then they said, one more cigar and he's fired. There's a whole episode which took about three weeks to film which I don't smoke. I said, ah, okay. And then we went on the air, and every girl in America sent me a cigar. It was very funny. So then I told Glenn, I said, well, you know, the public has spoken. So, yeah, they were going to fire me. And then they certainly, when the shows, when my show, when those shows are over, they just never hired me again. Because the A-Team was the same thing. They didn't want me on the A-Team, NBC this time. In that case, I wasn't on the first three-hour show because the network said no. And then Stephen Cannell, who created that show, so well, if you don't hire me, I won't do the show. So I got to do the A-Team. Well, so you went from being an actor, and then you started writing books, and you even wrote a screenplay that has been viewed all over the world. I did. I've written a couple, but uh, my first book is about surviving cancer the old-fashioned way, by yourself. And my second one's about the birth of my first son and the death of my father. And I'm known for these two shows, these two characters who are similar. My books, if you read my books, you're going to get the same thing and go, Wow, but it's all me. It's all me. Well, thank you so much for giving me some of your time. Yeah, I like St. Louis. You know, I was a Stan Musial fan back in the day, the 50s and 60s. Growing up in Montana, we had nothing. We had nothing. No TV, nothing, but we had radio. So I could listen to baseball. You know, the Cardinals, Stan the man. Thank you. This has been RK9 interviewing Dirk Benedict here at Contamination. For more information about Contamination, check out their Facebook at facebook.com slash contamination STL. And for more interviews from the con, check out our Facebook at facebook.com slash the wave STL. Stay tuned to 89.5 The Wave for more from Contamination. Contamination.